Democracy in Practice. to another interesting edition of the program Democracy in Practice, reaching you from the stables of liberty. The name remains Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kader. Well, if you say the race is getting tighter, you will be right. Well, the People's Democratic Party, the oldest political party, if you like, in this dispensation, at least from 1999 till now, we would say, uh, seems to have crossed uh, a great hurdle. The, all progress, the ruling All Progressive Congress is also on the line. All eyes are on the party. But of course, there seems to be a third force, uh, some people say alternative force, whatever name you want to call it, the New Nigerian People's Party, NNPP. But then, I'm sure, when you talked about NNPP, you know, uh, he's been in PDP, of course, he was among the founding fathers of PDP, he was among the founding fathers of APC, and of course now, NNPP. But then, a lot of issues within the polity, but uh, let's leave all that for today. I'm sure we'll come back will be in order, because we've not been here since uh, after the Ramadan ending. But of course, my colleague uh, have been doing a wonderful job. Today, we have a guest with us who I'm sure needs little or no introduction. Well, some people will say it's controversy personified. Uh, some people will say... <laughs> Is a grassroots mobilizer personified. Uh, some people will say, well, he's been virtually everywhere. Uh, but of course, starting from the grassroots uh, to the national level as a senator and of course back again. And uh, he is still in the race, you will see. Talking about Suleiman Otman Onkui, Senator, let me add, good to have you here with us. A very good morning to you and uh, our viewers. All right. Uh, just uh, just a while ago, we were, this, we, were, we were joking with someone that uh, Senator Shousani's name is now SS2 because uh, he got two, two votes <laughs> at the delegate election. But that is just by the way, you know. Well, let's take which here we are again, <laughs> people will say. Uh, you were part of the founding fathers of the People's Democratic Party. You were a commissioner uh, under that uh, dispensation. Uh, you were part of also the founding fathers of the All Progressive Congress, the matter that at least that brought the party. But here we are again with uh, NNPP. Uh, what do we make of that journey? What you make of that journey? Thank you. First of all, I think uh, thank you very much uh, for agreeing to host me today or this morning. Mm. <coughs> and uh, directly to your question, what does not Nigerians make out of the current polity? Okay. That is the question. What should, is, what, what should they make out of the current this polity? content, mm -hmm. majority of the electorate and the people are discontent. Mm -hmm. They are dissatisfied with what has filled the political space today. That is our assessment, okay. that is our summary, that is our summation, and that is the reason why today we come up with what we feel is a credible alternative platform in the polity. Okay. So that discontent with the APC, discontent with the PDP, dissatisfied with the ruling party and its ways and means today, uncomfortable with what people know of the PDP, here is an alternative platform. And we call it alternative, mm. not only an alternative, but a credible alternative alternative, alternative because it wasn't a jamboree. We picked quality, tested, 
and trusted leaders from within the discontent lot of the politicians to come together, incubate, think about it, find the square root between the two parties, reflect on okay. what, what, the situation yeah, the, the, in the polity, the find and put on the table for Nigerians oh, okay. ooh, 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 that ooh, alternative. We'll ooh, ooh, come to this party. alternative. People, so, uh, people will say, you also talked about this alternative in 2014-2015 for the APC. What we talked about mm. then was change. Okay. Yes. Now what we are talking about is credible alternative platform. Okay. That's what we are talking about because the change we saw, mm. the change we thought, the change we wanted, the change indeed Nigerians perceive and reflected on the faces of those leaders that we were able to produce under the APC to us and to Nigerians because we are reflecting the faces of Nigerians, we are reflecting the minds of Nigerians, we are only trying to read in between the lines and that's why we are coming with this. What will be the difference? Somebody will say, what will be the difference between this credible alternative and the change that some of you advocated in 2014-2015? The difference is that in 2015, take practical example here. Take practical example here in Kaduna State. Okay. Somebody was made the governor, and he is still the governor. Mm. Did it reflect the principles of change people of Kaduna State thought about? The answer is simply no. And that is why today, personally, myself, I'm spearheading this platform. Okay. Go to Kano. The people of Kano State went to the polls because they believe in some persons. They believe in some personalities. They believe in the credibility of alternative presentation then and they chose their leader. But it didn't work. It didn't work because at the end of the day, the person that emerged as the so-called winner was not a reflection of what the people of Kano prefer. And that is why, again, we are not saying this in theories. In practice today, when the alternative platform was taken to Kano, it appears clearly it is not only an alternative platform, but it is a credible alternative platform because the people of Kano scrambled onto that platform. Mm -hmm. So also in other states, so also on the national platform. Today, we are not bringing NNPP to attract everyone to come and produce what in their own selfish mind should be. Rather, what we did is we opened up the platform, sent it around Nigeria, 36 states, did our congresses, attract membership who we know are tired of the left, are tired of the right, and we now put in between this credible alternative platform and people were attracted to it. And they have given themselves natural, honest, transparent emergence of leadership from word to the national level to provide for themselves leadership of the platform. So what, like we have said, the credibility of the platform and the credibility of the cream of leadership of the platform have already said volumes, okay. volumes already, Madam Abdulaziz, volumes have already been deposited 
on the open platform today in Nigeria where you see clearly what the ruling party of eight years have not been able to produce in two years congresses from what to convention was impossible for the APC. At the end, they had to end up where a carrot and stick had to appear. What, what people, some people will say the same thing was said about the PDP in 2014. <laughs> exactly. The so you are, you are now concluding yeah. my own part so, of the story. So. The PDP could not do it too. Where they did it here in Kaduna State, it took us a torturous 11 months without graduation. Timeline of Congresses that should last for eight weeks took 11 months, ended up with court cases because people have been brutalized. People were not allowed to express themselves. People at the end of the followership of the parties were cut off from decision making. Leaderships were decided in the dark room or back room of one or two supposed leaders to write names that are supposed to be leaders of those platforms. How are we sure, that how, is, how are we sure NNPP may end up like the PDP and the APC? End up? I'm happy we are just beginning. <laughs> so so we are just beginning. So it's too early to say? No. If you want to say, you could say. You are entitled to your own opinion. But we are just beginning. No. We are just starting. Yeah. And from our start, yeah. Let me lend my voice of experience to that. Okay. You agree you said it, and it is not out of place. Hun Kui was part and parcel of the cropping of each of those staple parties. The, AP, the, BDP, the APC, the APC. APC, World Congresses. At the beginning, in 2014, it took us a torturous four very, very torturous months just to conclude World Congress. Okay. Why? Like we said, laws are made to be observed. Laws are made to make people no, but was, no, there, there was, was, was there actually Those World are Congress? Made was there actually World Congresses? Congresses? Sorry? People will say, was there actually World Congresses under, under that? Because I was coming to that, people will say, if people like you, She Usani and others, have not mm. actually jumped ship, probably what happened in Zamfara and happened in Rivers will have happened in Kaduna. Because there were those who said... What were, happened in Rivers? But there were people who said there was no World Congress. What happened in Rivers, Malam Abdulaziz? We saw a situation APC. where the APC, at the end of the day, couldn't even have candidates. So, is that what you want in Kaduna? That's what I'm saying. People will say, if you are still put in that party... So, sorry, Madam Abdulaziz, mm. is that what can produce a solution? Well, I should be asking you that. that no! You have seen it in Rivers. You brought the Rivers alternative. Mm. Where they were, at the end of the day, not able mm. to produce representation even on ground. Mm. Was that what we wanted? To me, that cannot be a solution. I lead people. What, was that was that I crazy? You listen you the party. to people. Mm. I act in consonance with the majority proposition okay. of the people at any given point in time. If you don't know why, won't we take whatever decision, reflect back on the psyche, mm. on the thinking, on the exact reflection of the mind. Of the people you will understand why i did what i did okay so you would rather not actually stay put in that party and not have representation i would rather never ever be a silent voice within a setting that i know is wrong okay i will never be i don't want to be i will never be i cannot be i cannot even cohibit where i can see what is wrong and I cannot be part of the solution of what is wrong. Okay. I would rather 
will not be there. Uptown. What, 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 there's some senator. Another issue is the fact, like I've said, from 1999, people in Kaduna will recall the role you played. I mean, in 2003 also, the role you played for the reemergence of uh, 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 Governor McCarthy for his second term. Um, of course, after him, number D also, we know the role you played for him to emerge as a governor. Uh, even in Yakua 2011, even though you ran out of primary and lost out at Mutchella Square, you ended up supporting him to become a governor. And people will say, well, you also supported Nasser Erufai to the point of disagreeing with some stakeholders in Kaduna, you know, in imagine the governor of, of Kaduna in 2015. But here we are today, you wanting to be a governor. And somebody will say, what has changed? <laughs> So many things have changed. Okay. What are those things? <laughs> First of all, as a psychologist and a student of psychology, never say never okay. on the behavior of any human yeah. mind. Okay. Yes. Why? <laughs> we come up with positive thinking all the time. Okay. Positive thinking then made us thought Nasr Errufai is or could be or should be and can be a good leader. A good leader must have some attributes. Okay. We misconceived. I don't want to use the flip side of the coin. But we misconceived. We are human. Human mind is the most difficult thing to study. It's the most difficult thing to pin down. We were wrong. After he became governor, what we thought, what we planned, what we feel the people require, what we feel Government should organize and prioritize itself to the needs of the people we are dashed. Okay. This is not only my submission, it is my synopsis of the minds of majority of citizens in Kaduna State. So if we are wrong in what we thought, so many others were wrong. Some of them professors were wrong. I know when it came to APC. I know when it came to Nasri Erufai as a candidate. I know when it came to uh, 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 General Muhammad Buhari then as a leader. I know what a lot of professors put behind and take a stretch for full support because of their beliefs. Okay. Beliefs come from synopsis of thinking, synopsis of what you want to believe such a mind is capable of doing. But at the end we were all wrong. If we are wrong as leaders, we shouldn't go and dig our graves and, 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 and go extinct. What we are supposed to do is what we are doing now is what we have done now. That is why we decided. Yes, we agree we are wrong. Yes, we agree in some instances we even have to tender some apology. Okay. Maybe we would have gone deeper to know. But again, note it. Remember, for a human being, it is evident. Even our creator, you could see people go beyond the limits their creator probably provide for them. That is our creator. What more of between El Rufai and the people? So do you feel, do you feel disappointed for the support you This Disappointment is an understatement. Okay. Not for what concerns Hunkui. But what concerns the social contract between Erufai as the governor of Kaduna State and Kaduna State government on the one hand and the social contract with the people. It is shameful. 
it is no, no. quite very unbecoming mm. of a leader. Okay. To me, they have not fulfilled that social contract. contract. They have failed. And it is a submission of the governor himself. Okay. And we agree. He submitted. That he has failed. The government has failed. Okay. He submitted. And we accept. And the people too agree that he, Nasser Erufai, as governor of Kaduna State, and the government of Nigeria today under the APC has woefully failed. And that is the reason why okay. anybody who answers the name of a leader must rise up to that occasion. Oh, what? Does it say, you know, when you, you can't talk about uh, Senator Suleiman Utman Hunkwe without people even talking about Kaduna State and talking about even your time at the Red Chambers, for instance, uh, one of the issues that came to the fore, people say you were uh, at the forefront of ensuring blocking, uh, let me use that language, of the foreign loan to Kaduna State. Uh, the governor has said that several times that if you had not done that, that probably Kaduna will have gone beyond where it is today. But this same Kaduna that at the end of the day you may inherit to continue from where he stopped. Why did you take took that, that, that decision? Two reasons. One, my dream of Kaduna State mm. is around the welfare of the people. Okay. Me, as a leader, whether a governor or non or whatever, but answering the name of a leader, an elder, a statesman, a politician, leading one for that matter. The dream of my mind in Kaduna State is about the welfare of the people. You feel that for it is that not the about okay. roads and bridges alone. Road and bridges occupy a very insignificant portion of the social well-being of the people. Okay. That is why my priority as a leader, my priority as a governor, should I have the opportunity from the people, we feel one of them is to restore the dignity and confidence of the people to themselves mm. as human beings, as citizens, mm. they are entitled to some dignity. Dignity to do with the way they live, where they live, their livelihoods, their social interaction within themselves, peace, tranquility within the communities. These are, to me, one very key important thing. You cannot run a state of almost 10 million people where preponderant population, majority population within, have their own hearts and minds and psyche brutalized for one reason or another issue of that social contract it is one very key fundamental contract between any leader as a chief executive in our constitution okay. preservation of lives property. and properties of the people that contract Erufai agreed his government himself has failed. You cannot be building bridges at the expense of the lives of the people. The essence of that contract socially is defeated. Fact of the matter is that for somebody to adjudge himself a failure on the seat and still continue and worst of all, he feels he has the right, he has the power, he has the choice, he has the decision to now 
bring someone and hoist on the people of Kaduna State to go for another eight years is an abomination. It is a challenge to me as a citizen in this state. It is a challenge to the common people. It is a challenge to our common matrimony as a people, as citizens, residents, and owners of this state. Okay. It cannot continue. That is the reason why you could see. We are not looking for a solution from the APC because what has happened already tells you if you follow that route, it's a cul de sac. Right. So also the PDP. Let, let, I have said it. Sorry, Madam Abdullah. Let me quickly conclude. Okay. That is why the NNPP is here today. It is a credible, okay. unblockable, unblockable political platform as an alternative to the people. All right. It's the hub landmark of the program, uh, Democracy in Practice, reaching you from the stables of liberty. And our guest today, distinguished Senator Suleiman Otman Hunkwe, is the gubernatorial candidate of the New Nigerian People's Party. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we will delve, to, we delve into other issues. We will be right back. Democracy in Practice. Thank you for being the, you just joining us. Well, you've missed the, if I say the explosive first part, uh, I won't be wrong. Suleiman Otman Hunkui, senator, is always uh, a journalist delight anytime. And uh, he is our guest today on the program Democracy in Practice, reaching you from the stables of liberty. The name remains Abdel Aziz Ahmed Kader. Well, distinguished senator, so many issues there. Um, of course, we are just counting down 300 and something days to go to the end of this administration. <laughs> As it is, and uh, the electorate will have the final say at the end of the day. But of course, we've been, they said, when we get to the bridge, we will cross it, definitely. But again, after all said and done, when the parties give candidates, the electorate will have the final say. Now, what assurance are we actually giving to the electorate that? Let's start from Kaduna State, for instance, where the debt profile of Kaduna, incidentally, you were a commissioner of finance. So when it comes to finance, I'm sure nobody will actually hide the books or cook the books for you, as we will say. Uh, what assurance can the electorate out there, out there get that if and when you come to be, things will be different, that my children will not be paying a debt burden of thousands of dollars that probably they've not benefited from? Well, thank you very much uh, for that question. I think uh, there are two portion or answers to that question. Number one, you can see the third reason why you didn't allow me answer that question fully. No time didn't now allow you me. have brought it. <laughs> you have allow. brought it again. Okay, and that you have the opportunity. That is the now. third reason we wanted okay. not only to block but to moderate. Okay. We are saying $350 million for Kaduna State, for infrastructure, four years to go Lord. into an administration. Wait a minute. Can you moderate that? Okay. What are you going to do with the money? What is the tenor? How long will it take? What is the moratorium period? All these questions we felt as the representatives of the people, we needed to moderate them. But alas, in their own way, in their own terms, that loan must be granted and must be awarded and the proceeds must be taken. Now the question you asked, Kaduna State is only after Lagos State today in debt. Okay. 
under revenue profile of Lagos State in comparison to that of Kaduna State is by far stronger, more flourishing than anywhere near Kaduna State. That's what it so, is. So, why? Why push the state into that kind of debt? In other terms, up till this minute we are talking about, the problem is not the $350 million. Dollar. No. Okay. Or World Bank loan. No, it is not. There are so many other exposure that the state has been badly exposed to today as we are talking to the extent that what are those issues no one outside the government as at today know the depth of indebtedness that the administration of apc and malam nasr erufai has pushed kaduna state into but we are going to get that figures out in some weeks to come how do we get out of that fine you see that is the second part of your question if you forgot i didn't forget let me put it to you you must pay what you are indebted to. you must pay that is the other now that is the other is kaduna state government you kaduna state, kaduna state kaduna has to pay mm. Kaduna State must pay because they contracted the indebtedness or loans when they were given the trust of leadership. That was again the fourth reason why us co-travelers on that journey we felt anything to do with debt should be moderated. It should go beyond the decision of the governor or his immediate cohorts who will decide on behalf of over 9 million people and decide for another population of additional maybe 6 to 7 million people on born in the next 30 years as opposed to carry that body. It is too much of a grievous, unfair, unjustifiable, avoidable circumstance that this state should be pushed into. How well, it has been pushed into. So how do we get out of it? That is what we are saying. First of all, you must agree that, rightly or wrongly, they have gone into contracting those laws. Part of the way to go is to agree, first of all, what is the extent of the debt. You have to do that first. You must do that. You can, if you do start thinking, how do you get out of it without knowing how deep you are, you miss the point. Because when you are to pay those loans, it will not exterminate you. It will not exclude the government of the day in carrying out the most basic responsibility of state. Of, of, of Good. Of, so, whatever there are so many indices that has to be put on the table, but one of them is determined. What is the depth of indebtedness? Two, what is the moratorium period? Okay. At what rate are you supposed to pay? On monthly basis, annually, what is the per capita earning and total revenue the to the state mm -hmm. that is supposed to go into those debt service? What other channels, temporary, medium, and long-term majors you have to employ and adopt to be able to one first of all first of all like i said our priority be able to restore confidence of the people be able to provide Malam abdul aziz that is a principal primary issue 
that must be done by a government coming in now. We must. Because it's not the fault of the people. Unfortunately, it has been hoist on them. And you cannot now turn and refuse to pay salaries for a year because That's that so money has to be mopped up and paid to so so servicing of those. Servicing of those. So that is what I'm saying. It's a very complex machine and some of those areas are covered. Some of the indices the government is providing mm -hmm. are cooked up numbers. Some of the monies could even be stolen. So, you so if they are, mm -hmm. Madam Abdul Aziz, if they are and there is evidence that such monies are stolen, stolen, they must be returned. That is the first point. What? So okay. there are so many things that you have to plot on the table for you to come up with a comprehensive status of the state and then plot out the graph of two most important things. Your own social contract or the government of the day social contract between the government and the head of government and the common people on the one hand and then the contract of the loans that are being satisfied on the one hand between the government and the donors or the our own uh, what? Well, that, 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 that's one issue. You can't talk about Nigeria today and bringing it down to Kedunas. I mean, you can't plot the graph of even governors today at the national and state level without actually <coughs> taking security into cognizance. Uh, some of us know where Keduna was under McCarthy before nobody came. And we, knew, we knew what nobody did with even Operation Yaki, which was taken to another level up to the time of Yero. But today, Keduna has actually become something else. How do we tackle this insecurity that today... Madam Abdulaziz, again you are back into my trap. Mm. Because when I wanted to talk about our three principal mm. considerations that are going to be our key priorities in government in Kaduna State, mm. I only mentioned one. Okay. Which is the restoration back of the dignity of our people and the social contract between them. The second thing as a priority is security of lives and property of the people and their livelihood. Okay. This is one key area and that is what you are touching on. And that was what I was saying get funds to build road at the expense of the security of lives of the people. A government, one of the most fundamental provisions of the Nigerian constitutions, one of the key provisions, prominent, strong, outspoken contract between any governor or leader in Nigeria and the people is the security of lives property. and property. Yeah, but today the here we are. Excuse me, Madam Abdulaziz, you asked the question. Mm. That is what we are saying. Mm. How that, is what, of this? that is our key priority number two. Okay. The first one is a social interaction between the government and the government. The, this one now is an investment that must be done. It's a priority investment. How do you intend to do this? First of all, you have to dismantle that unserious machine that has been set by this government. Which machine is that? Good. The contract is not between anyone and the people. The contract is between the governor as the head of government and the people. He swore in to safeguard lives and property. But when we come today, we see that the governor decided that main event, that main social contract, that main very critical point has been shifted away. The so-called ministry today and a commissioner 
appointee is the one in charge of security of lives and property in the Kaduna state. Oh, but they will claim it is an administrative work. <laughs> the security agents are on ground. <laughs> that is the they way you see it, Malam Abdul. That is what I see it differently. Mm. And that is what I tell you. Ask me the question and I answer. Mm. To me, that is too much of a priority to be placed on a third party agreement. Okay. It is the first most important fundamental contract between Kaduna state government between Nasri El Rufai as the governor who went and took the Quran and swore to uphold the provision of the constitution of Nigeria and the first fundamental segment of that constitution is protection of the lives of citizens and their property. One thing, excuse me, Madam Abdul Aziz, excuse me. Good enough, he accepted he has failed. His government has failed. That is to tell you that the first thing to do, the next thing to do differently, is to dismantle that machine okay. that put any other thing first before the security of lives and property in Kaduna State. Give every priority. You cannot, as an individual, determine what that can be. You have to pick from the security agencies. You have to sit and provide a working environment, a situation, a platform that will re-examine the priorities of security in this state. And when you do that, you come up with the synopsis and you face the situation squarely. Because that is the most important contract, like we say. Maybe later you are likely to bring in another question that will make me bring our third priority in government. What, what is the top priority? Let's just go that. The third priority is under the situation today in Kaduna State, I am a citizen by birth. I am a citizen by residence. And there are so many of us that are citizens today by way of settlement. We have never seen it so bad as it is today. One of the key things that have to be done is that our government, as a matter of priority, have to re-examine, review and re-examine those within the setting in Kaduna State that has been shortchanged one way or another by government or its segments or institutions around government that have been shortchanged. And we have to provide an enabling environment, a support group services, okay. a very clear mandate by government to support after creating or recreating small and medium scale and traders that can now come back and be able to earn a living for themselves, for their families, which he thought to, through this medium of these elements of bad governance, have been put out of jobs, not because they cannot employ themselves mostly, but because they have been made unemployable. Don't forget, under this segment, the most important employer of labor is and remain, and we agree, we are going to make very, very key, is agriculture. Okay. So many people, for two reasons, have been put out of job as farmers. One, security. We have spoken about it. If we cannot guarantee the security of lives within our localities around the state, how can people, as farmers, 
go to their farms and they end up in the hands of these criminals. Nobody will be willing to go. And we are talking of the subsistence farmers and also the medium and large scale farmers. Most of the large scale farmers within the boundary of Kaduna State have closed shop. And they are employers of labor in themselves. They have closed shop. We must be able to restore confidence. That is number one. Number two, to support agriculture. Europe as a block alone, Malam Abdul Aziz, subsidize agriculture to the tune of over 300 billion euro per annum. The most important contract between the government and the farmers and the people on the other end is to bring in, not to abolish, okay. the issue of subsidy. As you abolish subsidy, one bag of fertilizer, brand fertilizer today in Kaduna State is over 30,000 naira. Why one bag of maize, Madam Abdul Aziz, it's less than 30,000 Naira. In fact, it is 22, 23,000 Naira. How can you exist? How can farmers exist? How? How? So it is a preoccupation. So we see a reversal It of is situation. supposed to be a commercial outing. Okay. How can that commercial outing exist and subsist? It cannot. We have to review. We have to to put a lot of attention, but not only attention, honest, purposeful attention, attention of government and governance into the skill and involvement of farmers into agriculture Sorry. to create a stable social surrounding for the people, which is, as we now refer back again, is the first social contract. All right. Uh, distinguished senator, after all said and done, like I said earlier, the electorate will have the final say because there will be the ones who decide who govern them at the end of the day. Uh, of course, INEC as it is, is doing the much it can to ensure that we have um, a transparent, free and fair election. What will be your message to the electorate? Because, of course, we've seen the issue of voter apathy is also another issue. Because people felt, well, we've been mobilized to come out and do this, but here we are, like you said in a situation that some people are even uh, denied their sources of uh, livelihood today. What will be the message of hope? The message, the rapidly, number one, I'm not holding hold for INEC. Okay. INEC over the past few years have bring in very credible, reliable efforts that okay. has been translated through technology in safeguarding the chastity and provision of transparency into the activity of elections. People should take advantage of that. Two, people must know that for now, there are three parties. They are putting three people but I said it's three party, two candidates. Later we'll do analysis on that. People can only be able to have a break if they provide for themselves a break. I will guarantee people, as I'm talking here now, with the provision of technology into our election system, what you go out to vote largely is going to be what you are going to have. So people must regenerate their confidence into the election process because INEC has done a lot. Okay. Take provision of the Anambra election. There is practically nothing on earth the APC has not done to rig that election. Somebody with over 100,000 votes emerge as the winner because they could not impregnate the system and the people triumph. In Kaduna State and other segments, the people will triumph. That's why 2023 mm. is the year of the people. Okay. 2023, Malam Abdul Aziz, the people will triumph. 
Okay. But they must mm. also discharge the most important contract as a responsibility. Renew your voter's card, be on the queue on the day of the election. In fact, technology has now softened and brought easier means. You are not likely to spend more than one hour on one queue. Hour queue. You will be That's accredited, you will vote, you will leave to your house. Ooh. And the decision will be, quote me, Madam Abdulaziz, mm. quote me, because I know my people, this government of repression will be thrown out of business. When you say three parties and two candidates, are we, are we seeing a merger between two political parties? <laughs> that will come when the time comes. But note it. Mm. It's three parties, two candidates, two candidates. in Kaduna State. All right. <laughs> Let's leave it there. Um, that is open to... Uh, interpretative journalism uh, at the end of the day. So, but like I said, at the end of the day, the electorate will, the ha will have the final say. Thank you. Our guest today, distinguished Senator uh, Suleiman Otman Hunkui, he was one time Commissioner of Finance in Kaduna State. He was gubernatorial aspirant, gubernatorial candidate, and here he is also now gubernatorial candidate of uh, the, well, they say it's not a tough force, a credible alternative party. Uh, the new Nigerian political, uh, yeah, political party, NNPP. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Madam Abdulaziz, for right. having me. Thank All you. Right. Well, that's size of our program for today. Until next week, we will come your way again with another interesting guest. The name remains Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kader. Have a wonderful day ahead. Democracy in practice.